Hi, Caroline Carney here at Pal Lane Arts, and I'm standing with Jean Plew uh, in front of her piece, which will be in our jury show, which will run from now through May 14th. Jean, can you introduce us to your piece? Yes, the piece is, um, it has words in it. I'm going to say that because I have a lot of pieces with words in it. Mm -hmm. And it has animals and figures. So those are the main components of it. And I got inspired to make this. I have a little dog, only one. He's not this color. He's more dark brown. And his name is Romeo. Or <laughs> Woofie. He's a heartbreaker. Yeah, he is. Anyway, so the way these dogs look reminded me of him. And I got this, uh, some card that looks a little bit like this in the mail from Penn Vet. Mm -hmm. And that's where I had taken my dog once to Penn Vet and they sent me cards. And so I thought I'd like those two girls together with the two dogs that are looking similar or maybe just the composition. Mm -hmm. And um, so I thought I want to, you know, continue with animals. And people, so I I tried this. Then that thing with fire, that was some looked like a fire alarm on the wall, and it didn't say fire. But I like <laughs> to write people who know what it is, so I wrote fire on it. <laughs> well, and also it's really striking, and it's the name of this piece, fire. Oh, um, yeah. I think that like um, the colors are so strong um, in this piece, and so I can see why when you saw it, you were like you were inspired but then the way that you have taken this and made it your own with the bright colors and the strong line um it's really quite um quite striking do you work with i know you said you alternate between doing figurative work and doing abstract work is strong line and strong shapes something that you explore a lot yeah yeah i like uh, uh, bright colors strong shapes and line quality and I like line qualities that, you know, look like they're drawn or scribbling yeah. with a crayon, um, not really neat. And I don't try to make something look like a photo. Uh, and I do that in my abstract work a lot. Sometimes I just like the way the line looks. Mm -hmm. um, and, I'll, and I'll work on that. And maybe this girl's hair has lines on it. Other places have lines besides the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, you know, uh, you can pick up the line. For example, around the jacket and the shirts and and things and the stethoscope. So you you pick and up you, lines yeah. off and on, which yeah, really drags really, your eye around. You really like you allow this these two planes to me, and then the way that you just allowed enough line to give you the shape and define it without overwhelming it with line. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I don't think about it. most people that see it; they just think dogs. <laughs> and they don't tell me that, so that's interesting. I guess it's kind of like an angular type of. Well, and you're very you're very good with your um, brush strokes in like and laying your color in a way that you use the line to give shape, but also the way you're using your brush strokes. This is um, more of a like a gesture or um, representational painting. But you have given so much detail that it it is a a portrait it is something of these two women with these two two dogs and um i think that that's it kind of does a nice meeting between the shapes and things of something that you would see in an abstract but then codifies it into a narrative piece this telling a story about these two women and these two dogs yeah i like the idea of telling the story and i like the idea of you know what's happening there like what what's i mean why are there two women? Why are there two? Um, and just the idea that they're not really neat. It sort of looks like I can't draw, which may be true at this point. But I used to be able to draw. Um, but I like the idea that it looks sort of primitive and maybe like a duck can or something like that. Well, and I also think it's that you have used the bare minimum amount of information to make the most of what's happening here. So you have really taken each of the figures down to their components so that we can recognize what they are. And I think that that's what you mean by primitive. Like we can recognize what they are, but you've included information like we can see expressions and things like that on them. They are distinct figures. And yet you've edited out the things that would make it photorealistic. And yet we still know what it is. 
Yeah, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. That's right. Yeah. I also like um, your perspective on this. Because uh, we we see the two figures, the one is a little bit in front of the table, the other's behind the table, and then the tabletop itself, uh, which should look kind of flat, is tilted up so that we can see the dogs who are sitting on it, so that becomes part of the story too. But you didn't just go and make it a rectangle, you made it more of a trapezoid. You gave the perspective yeah, going back. Of, yeah. yeah, so it, it moves me through the space. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you're thinking when you're doing the composition? Uh, do you just react to what you've done, or do you think about it and do drawings beforehand? How do you? I don't do any drawings beforehand. I look at the photo and I think, well, what I want a couple of people here and a couple of dogs, and then... Um, I think about the background and what I want the color of the background to be, and maybe I'll put that, and then I'll try to block in where the figures would be with paint or draw it. No, I don't really draw them. And then I just put on more and more layers, and as I'm doing that, I, I pay attention to the composition. Um, and it's not like a flat pink. It's not like a flat gray. No, there's no yeah. flat color on this. And so... I, I, mean, I hope that like what I did in the abstract painting is kind of also present here, even though it's a picture of something. Like this black shape here, I yeah. don't think that that was there. I think I added that, and I don't know why I added it, but maybe I thought this would look better. <laughs> but it made, that, it made that a much more interesting corner, because if not, it would just be a triangle, and now you have that little cut into it it pushes that, you into this figure yeah which which it sounds like you do instinctually which is you're responding to the composition in real time which is, i guess that's what's happening because i don't know what it's going to look like I, I know it was what it would be the two people i know it'd be some kind of people but i don't know what they look like and then i started making the woman i thought well i don't know she looks pretty i don't know if i like if that's the point of it to make her look pretty or make this one look different I thought it's just whatever works in the with way the rest of the painting's going. Yeah. And then sometimes I put some paint on it that doesn't look right and have to go over it. But I like this one's hand. I know it's not real. I like the dog's faces where they kind of pink <laughs> around the snout. Yeah. Well, what I think well, it really matches into the the background. A lot of artists will do yeah, art. ties well. Yeah. Into it. And okay. even the details around her mouth tie really well into oh, yeah. the myriad of paints that you've swirled throughout. The background. Yeah. I think that one of the things, uh, because you're speaking about the abstract work you do, I think one of the things that we think of in abstract is a lot of times, a lot of abstract artists say it starts with a mark and then they react to the mark. And we don't always hear people who are doing representational work speak about it that way, but you are doing represent a representational piece. And yet at the same time, you're taking those things that you do in abstract work where you're reacting to the composition as you're creating it. Uh, that's really intuitive, and I I think is a nice addition to uh, this representational piece. But it has its roots in things that could also be seen as more abstract practices. Yes, I agree with that. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Jean, I told you I'm a, a talker. I'm sorry. And it's just a point of our appreciation because you know what? We're fangirls. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I, so. I like that. I guess if, when you said they start with uh, abstract, people start with the mark. I'll start with the background. Yeah. So with some color first. But yeah, like um, we had an artist in earlier today who said he starts with a choice. And then after the choice, everything else is about balancing around that choice. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so, and what's interesting in what we get to do and why we love talking to you is that we, every artist, like every person is a little bit different. So every person's uh, art is different and everybody's approach is different. And so one of the things that's great about looking at art is you get to see the world through that artist's perspective for even just a minute. And it can change the way that you look at the world or it can confirm it or it can, lots of things can grow out of that. Yeah, I like that. And that's one reason I like looking at art, especially art that doesn't look like mine. Yeah. Just yeah. for that reason, it kind of gives you a window into what other people are experiencing. So. Yeah. And, and we all need to things. look at the world like that and I look at so each too. other like that. So, Have an appreciation. It's one of the important parts of seeing art and seeing creative 
endeavors. So we mm -hmm. hope that you will come see Jean's terrific piece. She has a second piece too that's also very great, JJ's Pony, uh, that will be in this show, the jury show, from now through May 14th. Thank you so much, Jean. Oh, thank you. Thank you.